Okay, it's time for another Video Obscura Hot Takes, the E3 edition. It was a pretty big day, so we got a lot to talk about, both with Microsoft, Bethesda and Devolver Digital. So let's get started. With Sony having no press conference this year, Microsoft is probably the big one. I mean, sure, there are lots of other press conferences, but Sony and Microsoft, those are the two kinds of press conferences where you kind of expect to see brand new, like, mind-blowing looking AAA games. Not necessarily exclusive, but just very very expensive looking. Microsoft had a lot of elbow room to, to show that this year and I want to say that they used it. It was definitely not a, a bad press conference. They showed off their own IPs like Gears of War, a very interesting Lego Forza expansion and then a new Halo game for their next console. But of course the big showstopper was Cyberpunk 2077. It's a hugely anticipated game. I'm looking forward to it as well. And you know when they came up with a, with a CGI trailer I was like eh, yeah sure we can look at another aesthetic CGI trailer that's something we can all look forward to but of course Keanu Reeves came on stage uh, he's part of the game and uh, and I was excited because he's probably one of my favorite actors not just because of how he acts in movies but mostly because of how he lives his, his life he's a he's a very humble person just a, a nice man all around from what it seems and certainly a lot of actors are, are nice persons in the public eye but there's just a feeling of being genuine with with Keanu Reeves and that's something I can really respect and I think it also means mentioned that when I, I talked about the Matrix 20th anniversary a few videos ago. But we all know what the real announcement was and I've collected a little compilation video. Then check this out. What? Fantasy Star Online 2. What in the world? Oh my, are you kidding me? Oh! Fantasy Star Online 2. Oh shit! Oh! That's hot! Fantasy Star Online 2. Fantasy Star Online 2. Fantasy Star Online 2. Fantasy Star Online 2. What? Fantasy Star Online 2. That's right, Fantasy Star Online 2 is finally coming to the West. I think it's been out in like eight or nine years by now, so it's incredible that it's uh, it's happening. That it's finally coming west. Uh, Sega was was quick to announce that it only it's only for North America so far. Uh, sounds like they're working on on the rest of the territories, but it being a free to play online game, I'm thinking you can probably circumvent that. Uh, you can just download it from the American servers. Uh, show you. Your, your ping might be a little bit uh, different, but doesn't really massively matter. Maybe you can't really spend money on, on microtransactions either, but we'll see. I'm definitely uh, looking forward to, to giving that a go for real. I've messed uh, a little bit with the language patch PC version a while back and seems good. So I'm looking forward to giving it a, a serious go on consoles. Fantasy Star Online 2, we did it everyone! Microsoft also didn't talk as much about that cloud gaming stuff as I thought they would. They did have a very strange sentence where they, they talked about how your home console would become your cloud server. So is that just a kind of PlayStation remote play function where, you, where you're able to connect to your console at home with your phone? Guess we'll have to see more about that. I think the smartest thing they did in, in that regard was to roll all their, their services up into something they called uh, Ultimate Game Pass. So instead of separating people who have to pay for the Game Pass on console, the Game Pass on PC, and Xbox Live Gold just to, to play online on consoles, they at least put everything together into one neat package. Fantastic idea, because they've really been trying to push this, uh, this Game Pass idea for a while now by constantly putting it on sale and, and putting advertisement up for it everywhere on the dashboard. It's kind of a double-edged sword really. Because if you want people to get Game Pass, you gotta have big games on there that are available from day one. But publishers are not going to get into that if there isn't a customer base for it to make it worth their while. So yeah, one thing can't grow without the other. Hopefully this will change for Microsoft. As I mentioned earlier, they also casually mentioned their next generation console. Not much to talk about, just a bunch of fluff of people coming out and promising that it'll be more powerful than you can even imagine. That's fine. But Phil Spencer also said that they are going to focus on video games. That's about time, right? None of that multimedia business, because nobody cares about that. 
No more TV, 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 sports, sports, sports. And no more press conferences where they spend 10 minutes talking about some kind of baseball app that is only gonna be available in North America. Video games, get on it. So yeah, an all around great show for Microsoft. And we'll see you in hell. Bethesda's conference was a different beast. It started out grim and dark, not because of the games, but because of the stark reminder of the influencer-driven society that we live in now, where people are just willing to sell out their convictions for shiny baubles from big corporations. And this was clearly evident in the first couple of rows of people at this conference. Obviously paid hype men. I don't know what they got paid, but it probably wasn't a lot. It usually isn't. Maybe they just got free front row seats and some swag. Maybe they paid for their E3 ticket. But standing ovations from Todd Howard. You know, this is the guy who brought out Fallout 76. The guy who openly admitted in articles that they thought they could get away with it. I mean, come on. And also that one guy who screamed after almost every sentence that anyone at all said about anything. That was too much. And you can even see from the people on the stage that they completely got thrown off by having this guy just <laughs> screaming. But yeah, they're doing some Fallout stuff, adding new NPCs, adding a Battle Royale mode. They're also allowing the game to be free to play for this whole week. And I haven't really heard any reactions out of that yet, but I can tell you right now that it's going to be a nightmare. They don't have the greatest track record of making Fallout a functional game. You played more for the style and the aesthetics. So putting in something crazy like a battle royale mode and making it free. I mean, you're just asking for trouble. The servers are gonna be absolutely swamped. I mean, give it a few days and you'll probably hear a bunch of nightmare stories about these new updates. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'm not very hopeful. That was also their free to play mobile Elder Scrolls game, which apparently is kind of a rip off. I haven't played it myself, but you know, these types of games, they rely on having an energy currency that kind of slowly recharges over the day so you can play more. But they're supposed to strike a balance where they kind of want you to spend money. And my understanding is that the curve is so steep that it's not even fun to play. But apparently it's successful enough for them to port it to the Switch. It is a touch control game, but now they're adding waggle support. So yeah, whatever, I think it's just gonna turn out to be that a whole lot of people are going to be disappointed once they try it out. But we'll see, we'll see. So also a mention of that new Wolfenstein game, where you play as these two characters, the daughters of BJ Blazkowicz, who runs around killing Nazis to vaporwave music. Looks pretty cool, looking forward to more of that. And then of course there was the big game for this holiday, which is Doom. And that looks awesome, they've really expanded on the systems for demon killing where you kind of combo things together to get your health back, to get your armor back, or to get some more ammo. It sounds really interesting and it looks really interesting as well. Now, platforming isn't really my strong suit for video games, so that they're adding so much first-person platforming into this, I'm not too sure that it's my cup of tea. But that seems like a mode that was kind of different from the story. And hey, if they want to add more content to an already great game, that's fine with me. So yeah, with Bethesda's own games out of the way, let's talk about the real game, the real star of the show. To tell you more about Ghostwire Tokyo, here is the creative director at Tango, Ikumi Nakamura. That's right, Ikumi Nakamura, your new favorite game director, who's previously worked on games such as Okami and The Evil Within. The game itself, while not showing any gameplay, sounds like an incredibly interesting concept as well. 
and as they described it is not a survival horror game like the Evil Within series, but an action adventure game. So this one is one that is big on my radar. And especially the kind of announcements I, I hope for at E3, those big expensive games. Devolver Digital continued their storyline from past years and presented a handful of interesting new games such as the reverse survival horror game Carrion, where you play as the monster. But I think the biggest and craziest thing they announced was a new arcade cabinet, Enter the Gungeon House of the Gun Dead. There's been a couple of different pushes from Kickstarters to other projects to bring light gun games back. It's a genre I enjoy a lot. So I'm very happy to see someone dedicate themselves to making a full cabinet. And finally, after all the conferences were done, Square Enix also dropped a release date for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. The 3rd of March next year. Obviously it looks amazing, but the gameplay on display is mostly just from the first hour or two of Final Fantasy VII. And they did talk about splitting the game into chapters. So I'm very curious to see just how big this experience is going to be. Is it really just gonna be a one hour or two hour game? And then we'll have to wait like two or three years for the next episode? Like I'm really looking forward to this game, but I'm trying to keep my expectations low. Anyway, that's all of the E3 hot takes I got so far. There's gonna be a couple of more conferences and a couple of more shows over the coming days. So look forward to a new hot takes video coming at you very soon. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and a big thank you to all my Patreons who are supporting me with just a dollar a month, which you can too if you click on the link below the video.